Have you turned your attention to one who disputed with Abraham about his Lord because God gave him power? Abraham said, My Lord is he who gives life and death. He, the disputer, said, I give life and death. Abraham said, But God makes the sun rise from the east, so do you make it rise from the west? He, the disputer, was confused by this, and in arrogance made him reject faith. And God does not give guidance to an oppressive people. Or take the example of one who passed by a small town, completely damaged, up to its roofs. He said, oh, how will God be able to bring it to life after its death? But God brought on the death of his consciousness for a hundred years. Then God raised him up again. He asked him, how long did you remain unconscious in death? He replied, perhaps a day or part of a day. He said, no, you have remained unconscious for a hundred years. But look at your food and your drink. They don't show any signs of aging. And look at your donkey. And we make you a sign to the people. Take a further look at the bones, how we connect them, and clothe them with flesh. When this was made clear to him, he said, I know that God has power over everything. Take notice, Abraham said. My Lord, show me how you give life to the dead. He responded, don't you believe? He said, yes. But to relieve the burden on my mind, take four birds, train them to turn to you, then put a portion of them on every mountain and call to them. They will come to you flying with speed. Then be aware that God is exalted in power, wise. Assalamu alaikum. Please turn off your electronic devices until after Juma. Please. Thank you. <coughs> Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an Muhammadan Rasulullah. Ashhadu an Muhammadan Rasulullah Hayallah Sulat Hayallah Sulat Hayallah 
إن الحمد لله أحمده واستعينه واستقديه واستغفره وأشهد أن الله لا إله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد Verily all praise all hamd is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all shukr all thanks is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I beseech his guidance I ask I beg I implore for his forgiveness and I declare that Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is the messenger of Allah and that there is no God but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Wahid, the One Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh I'm smiling, one, because I'm happy to see all of you all's beautiful faces on this Yom al Juma, Juma Mubarak but uh, the second reason why I'm smiling is because the last time I gave a khutbah here the carpet was green so, so it's been a while so you'll notice that the topic of today's khutbah is slavery to Allah. And it's interesting because I, I started to say I wanted the topic to be obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I thought about the concept of obedience versus the concept of slavery. And the connotations of the two words are markedly different, I think. And even my son asked me when I was discussing the topic with him, he said, you know, that I really don't like the word slavery. I said, why don't I like it? I said, because of the connotations. Slavery is the lowest existence that a man or a woman or a person can have. It's not like obedience. For those of us that work, we obey a boss. You know, when we're driving, I had to force myself to obey the speed limit in getting here because I'd be here on time. You know, so we have man-made laws to which we adhere. But slavery is something different. The slave does not have any rights. The slave does not have the privilege or the honor or the dignity of questioning the master. And who better to call a slave, to call our master than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This podium, we can take it apart, we can change its color, we can take it apart and make it into a table, we can chop it up and make it into firewood. So the connotation of slavery is different, of ownership. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our rabb. He is our Lord. He is also our King. A person can be a king or a queen. You know, there's still countries in which they have sovereign rule with royalty. You know, like think of England, you know, the Queen Mary. Other countries, you know, Saudi Arabia, where they have a king. But that king does not have ownership of his subjects. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is both our owner and our Lord. He rules over us and we have to obey him to put forth the paradigm of our relationship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I wanted to read from Al-Qur'an this is our guidance, our book Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah the second surah, the cow in the second ayah Bismillahi Rahman Rahim Dhalika al-kitabu la raiba fi huda lil mutakeen Verily that is the book in which there is no doubt speaking about the Qur'an there's la raiba, no doubt no questioning it is a guidance to the mutakin, those who are pious. Insha'Allah, that is us. Insha'Allah, that is us. And I'll explain later 
why we shouldn't automatically say that we're believers. We should not automatically say that we are Abd. My name is Abdul Malik. I am slave to the king, one of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then when I look at my actions, you know, public and private, I've got to ask myself, am I really an Abd? Do I have tawakal? Do I have fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Even in the darkest moments when nobody else can see me. In relation to himself, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surat al in the 56th chapter of the Qur'an, the one entitled Dhariyat, the wind. I'm sorry, the 51st. In the 56th ayat. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wa ma halaktul jinna wal insana illa li ya'budun. I have not created the jinn. Those are the people of the ghaib. Nor man, except that they may worship me. And some people, Yusuf Ali, I believe he translates this word as worship. I like the word Ya'budun. Ya'budun is slave. Ya'buduni, my slaves. So Allah is telling us, in relation to him, he is our master. We are his slaves. We are to do what he wants. Even if you follow, you know, for people who follow this, uh, you notice there's a very uh, progressive, and I would say to some degree aggressive, atheist movement in this country. You may have seen the, uh, I think on the Georgia Avenue bus, the 70 bus, there was a big banner on the side of the bus that said, millions of people live without God, without the belief of God in their lives, and they're perfectly fine. So go ahead and have fun. What's wrong with these people? There's the word majnoon, you know, crazy. They call us crazy because we bow five times a day out of tawakal, out of fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they don't even acknowledge his existence. They deny the ayah. It's a very clear sign. You know, the chapter Bayina it calls, talks about the clear evidence. You know, it's, it's ridiculous. They say that all of this came into being. Just, it just happened. Can you imagine that? That's, that's insanity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on to say in Surah al dhariyat in the, 50, the 57th verse, Verily, Allah is free of all provisions. He does not ask that we feed him. It's amazing. Think about how hard we work for our food. You know, think about the times Ramadan is approaching. We're going to be thirsty. It's going to be in June, I believe. We're going to be very thirsty. The days are going to be very, very long. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is conditioning us to withhold, to withhold ourselves from water. What if He withheld the water from us? All of our science, you know, all of our power, we couldn't produce a drop of water if it wasn't by His command. One of the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to the Nabi, the prophets, and even the Mutakin throughout the Qur'an is His Abd. If you read Surah Al-Qaf, the 18th surah of the Qur'an, the one that talks about the cave, there's a person in it called Lur Karnain. Lur Karnain, it was said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the ends of all means, meaning that he was very powerful. This was, forget about Barack Obama and Vladimir Putin. This guy was like the Ferun. He had Ferunic power. He could go through the earth. With a, with, he had a mighty army. He could do whatever he wanted. And yet, he chose to do good, as opposed to Ferun. Ferun, you know, who called himself God. Anna Rabbukum, I am your Lord. Think about this as opposed to Dur Karnain. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you read the, the surah, he refers to Dur Karnain as one of our slaves to whom we had given power. Allah Akbar. Somebody as powerful as this. How many of us can say that if we had that kind of power, we would want to be referred to as a slave. And with that connotation, if you've ever seen the story of Roots, there was a book by Alex Haley um, called Roots in which he traced his genealogy. And a movie was made about it. I saw this movie uh, back in the 70s, I think it was. I was about eight years old. And there's a horrible scene in which one of the, you know, Alex Haley's, uh, it's like his great, great, great grandfather, he's getting beaten half to death just because he won't change his name to, I think they wanted to name him Toby. You know, that's what the slave master wanted. 
And he would say, Kuta. And the slave master would have him beaten. He said, Toby, Kuta, Toby. So this kept going back and forth until finally he just couldn't take the pain anymore. And he submitted to Toby. So slavery for us, for most of us, you know, if you're in this room, and I don't mean to exclude anybody, but for many of us, I'm bin Abd. I can trace my ancestors back to slavery. My, my grandparents just died a few years ago in their late 90s. So their grandparents were slaves. You know, so this kind of has, it stokes kind of acrid, a, a bit of acrimony in us. Because we think, like, I don't like the word slavery. But we have to humble ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can never think that we're all that. We can never think that all of the sajdas that we make, all of the siyam that we do, the fasting that we do, all of the sadaqah that we give, it makes us you know, worthy of being called pure in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's eyes. He's the one that gives us mercy. He's the one who decides whether we go to Jinnah or Jahannam, heaven or hell. I wanted to talk about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tries us sometimes and the things that, we, that if you're an abd, that you have to do. Sometimes you have to accept his qadr. And sometimes that's painful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that he will test us. There is a chapter of the Quran called the spider. It's the 29th chapter. In which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Ahasibil Nasu Ay Yutrak Yutraku Ayakulu Amana. Do people think that they can say, We believe? Wahumna Yuftanun and not be tested? Falaqada Katan Ladina min Kabalihim Fala Yatlaman Allahul Ladina Sadaku Wala Yatlaman al Kazibin. Yes, we tested those before them to figure out who was true and who was liars, who was false. It's easy to say, I believe, I'm a Muslim. But how difficult is it to when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tries you, as we will all be tried, you know, how difficult is it to still say, yes, I believe. And this is one of the fallacies of the atheist argument. I would counter with their argument that, you know, God does not exist. You know, our God is a, if he does exist, he's a cruel or uncaring God. Think about when you're in school. You know, you're going through, you're learning your ABCs, your one, two, threes. The tests get harder, right? As you get more intelligent, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows you to gain more kiyas, more hikmah, more understanding about the world ar- around you, your tests get harder. You go to first grade, second grade, third grade, then high school. And the tests are supposed to get harder. A high school student would be insulted if he was given, you know, a book, you know, see spot run. So what is this? This is stuff I had in kindergarten. So the same is for the hayat dunya the same is for the life of this world. The better you think that you are, the harder the tests are going to get. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Inshra'a, فَإِنَّمَا الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى إِنَّمَا الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى The expansion. With hardship goes ease. Verily with hardship goeth ease. And if you see how the scales are starting to be balanced in that particular surah, because it's a refrain. Hardship, ease. Wait a minute, after that ease is going to come what? Oh, more hardship. Oh, man, how can I get out of this? You can't get out of this until you die. And even then there'll be tests. There's the barzakh, the life of the grave. There's the Yom Kiyama, the day of standing, into which we will all have to attest about the things that our, our hands sent forth. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to please help us to always remember him, to please help us to strive to be the best of slaves if, to the degree that we are able, because everybody has their own particular test. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to please help us to walk in the footsteps and follow the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu to the best of our understanding and the best of our capabilities. And when we fall short, as we all will, as we all will time and time again, we ask that he reminds us he helps us to remember Fadakir. He helps us to remember him and repent and ask for forgiveness. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ayyur halam mursaleen Muhammadin wa ala wa sahbihi ajma'in all praises due to Allah, 
We ask Allah's peace and blessings on the one best among the prophets, Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as well as on his family and his companions. Dear Muslims, I wanted to continue with some of the qualities of the Abd. And it was interesting. I, I was explaining to somebody my name. You know, you know if, you're, if you're, again, not to exclude any particular ethnicity uh, that may be here, but when you've changed your name, people want to know, they've got questions. Why did you change your name? Oh, you're like Muhammad Ali, or, you know, he used to be Cassius Clay, or Lou Alcindor. He's now, you know, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Okay, so what is that? What is, Abdu- like, Abdullah? So, so I had to break it down to them, what that, what that name meant. So I said, okay, well, Abd is slave, you know, or if you like servant, but I prefer slave. Ul, of the Matic, you know, of the king. And that's one of the, the 99 attributes that we know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So I say, oh, okay, that's, that's an interesting name. So we see so many of us take on these attributes, Abdul Rahman, Abdul Razak, Abdul Qaddus. You know, so many, so many of these 99 ap- attributes. So being slaves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the the things that the slave should try to do is always be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Always have shukr. Always have thankfulness. You know, to not have thankfulness for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not being a good slave to him. In Surah Al-Rahman, the 56th Surah, he says, Which of the favors of your Lord do you deny? This is a refrain throughout this beautiful surah. That's why it's so beautiful. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on throughout that surah. If you read that surah, you know, he talks about the ships that sell on the ocean. Not because we're so smart in building them, but because he allowed us to do it. He talks about the things that we're able to do. You know, now in this day of technology, we put satellites up like it's nothing. Yeah, I remember when the first space shuttle went up. I think it was 1980. It might have been in sixth grade. It was a big deal. Like, wow, look at this achievement of mankind. Yeah, now, you know, I think they shut the space shuttle down. It's not even, it's so passe. Nobody even cares about it anymore. But, you know, we got a space station. We got these, these cell phones in our pocket that are more powerful than the computers of, of 20 years ago. So it can lead to forgetting that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Abrazak, the provider. He provided all of this. He gave us the risk, the money that we earn from our jobs. The things that we are able to accomplish is because he is al-Razak, the provider. He is al-Ghani, the one who is free of all needs. None of us here can say that we're free of, of needs. You know, and sometimes one of the challenges when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has increased your rizq, he's increased your, your money, you know, you, you wind up, maybe some of us, inshallah, someday will wind up on the Forbes list you know, as billionaires. You say, well, why would you pray to Allah? You, know, you hear these people. You hear some of these people talking. During the interview, well, you know, nobody helps me. You know, I pulled myself up by my own bootstraps, right? Yeah, that's, that's a common uh, English expression. I pulled myself up by my own... Yeah, to be so selfish, you don't even... And so unthankful, you don't even give thanks to your mother who almost died giving birth to you. You know, my wife, alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us four children. And she did it by... She insisted on natural childbirth, which I was like, Allah akbar, mujahideen. Yeah, it would have been me out of the like, knock me out, take the baby out, and it wake me up sometime, like, you know, a few days later. She insisted on natural childbirth. After the first one, she said, wow, I hope the next one isn't so hard. Like, you want to do this again? You know? But we, we don't, this society, we don't thank our mothers. We've got one day, Mother's Day. Somebody asked me, you know, what did you do for Mother's Day? I said, I didn't do anything. Oh, man, what's wrong with you? So look, to me, Every day is Mother's Day. We give our mothers thanks every single day. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, even if your mother is not Muslim, never say to her a word of uff. You know, uff is like an Arabic expression, like, yeah, get out of here. You see the young people, not all the young people, but many of the young people, they got this expression, ah, whatever. You know, boy, I'm telling you, I, my dad's here right now. I, I wouldn't have been here if I ever did that to my mother. You know, yeah, whatever, mom. Could you imagine that? And then some of us, unfortunately, become Muslim. And we were, we were holier than now. I had a brother, he was saying, you know, I don't even deal with my moms no more, you know? She a Catholic. She drinks pork. She eats pork and everything. Stop for love. I said, brother, this is the woman 
who came, who, you know, she carried you in her womb for nine months. How difficult this has been. So difficult that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes it in the, the Quran. Maryam. Maryam, the mother of Jesus. Isa ibn Maryam. She almost died giving birth. It was so painful for her. You know, it's a very painful experience and we don't even thank our mothers. You know, never speak a word of disrespect to your mother. That's not being a good slave. You know, and be thankful for the things that you're given. Sometimes we don't control our color. I look at us. I've known some of you all for several years now. We got gray hair. Some of us are missing hair, missing teeth. We got glasses. I'm trying to read. I'm trying to be cool, but I'm up here like, hey, wait a minute. I didn't bring my reading glasses with me. <laughs> yeah. Allah Akbar. But we don't thank him. We don't thank him enough. And look at the society, the materialism of the society. You've got women taking their clothes off on the internet to, to, uh, for money. You know, they're mothers and wives. Just engage in the most disgusting behavior. The, the men engage in disgusting behavior. This is not being a good slave. Let me read this from Surat al-Baqarah, the second surah. This is the 268th ayat about shaitan, because I'm going to get to him. He's not, he's not getting out of my khutbah without getting some chicken. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Shaitanu ya'idukum mulfaqra wa ya'murukum bil fashha. Shaitan threatens you with poverty and does what? Invites you to the fashha. What is the fashha? Open lewdness. You know, look at what passes off as entertainment today. You know, the music. And I'm not giving a fatwa on music. I don't give fatwas out. But, you know, if you don't listen to this stuff, you hear it passively. You know, you're sitting in your car. You know, somebody pulls up to you at the, at the stoplight and the, the new jolts out by the latest whoever. Profanity, 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 profanity. And you're like, oh my God. You know? And it doesn't, it stays in your brain. You know, it stays in your brain. And so many of these filthy lyrics... You can't get them out of your head. You know, I, this stuff in my brain, I'm like, oh God, I can't get that out of my head. You know, how many of us can say, man, I can't get that ayat out of my head. I would love to be able to say that. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promise and counter to, to shaitan's threatening us with poverty? He says, Wallahu ya'idukum ma'firatam minhu wa fadlu wa fadla Wallahu wasi'un alim. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises you forgiveness and something even better, fadlun. So this is fadlun. One of my teachers explained to me that this word fadlun, it transcends just risk. Risk is like, you know, the money that you get, the stuff that you have, the mata'ah, the stuff that we have. Fadlun is more than enough. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has for us when we obey him. If we don't get it in the Hayat al dunya if we don't get it in this life, inshallah, if he has mercy on us, we get it in the Akhirah, in Jinnah. And I want to go back to talking about the thankfulness. The thankfulness and accepting the Qadr. Being a good Abd. There was somebody who superseded us. He was not a good Abd. He had done a lot of stuff, a lot of good things. There's the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. And there's the Sunnah of Iblis, who we know as Shaitan. He was a high-ranking jinn. We don't believe in the concept of fallen angels. So, Shaitan was a jinn. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, he gathered all the angels. We know the story. He gathered all the angels and the jinn together. And he told them to prostrate before Adam. And I had somebody say, well, you know, why would your God have the angels and the jinn prostrate, prostrate before him? You know, if, the, if he wasn't, you know, if he's supposed to be all that. So, well, look, this is not, you know, prostrating that we do in Shadud. He was not trying, he was not encouraging them to worship Adam. He was encouraging them to acknowledge his greatness. Look what I created. Acknowledge it. He put us above the angels. We have freedom of the choice. Iblis would not do this. He refused. He was haughty. He said, Ana Hayrun Minanar. I'm made of fire. I'm better than him. I'm better than him. He was the original racist. You know, and what did he promise Allah? He promised that he would lay in wait for us. He refused to apologize. He would lay in wait for us to our left and our right, in front of us and behind us. 
And he would find most of them what? Unthankful. Unthankful, lacking in gratitude. Let me read Surah Al-Fajr. These two ayats here. Surah Al-Fajr, the dawn. It is the 89th surah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about us, describing us. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. فَأَمَّا الْإِنسَانُ إِذَا مَا بَتَلَاهُ رَبُّهُ فَأَكْرَمَهُ وَنَعْعَمَهُ فَيَقُولُ رَبِّي أَكْرَمًا And look at man. When we try him by expanding his means, giving him what he wants, the new car, the new health, you know, the new job, what does he do? رَبِّي أَكْرَمًا He says, my Lord honors me. You know? had a big fancy job, had a brand new car. Fifteen years ago, my car was brand new. You know, <laughs> I would drive a little bit slower. Somebody actually, knew, hey man, new car. Rabbi Akraman, my Lord, honor me. Now, about 15 years later, 100,000 miles later, dents later, you know, fender benders later that I couldn't afford to get fixed, $500 deductible, ah, forget about it. Huh? You know, it doesn't look so nice anymore. Now, do I become like the next ayah? But when we try him by restricting his means, rizqahu, his means, he says, God, this honors me. May Allah safeguard our tongues from this. And we have these English expressions, right? I'm always behind the eight ball. You know, if it wasn't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. You know, man, I can't win for trying, man. You know, and you, these are miserable people to be around. You know, you can't enjoy any of your nice stuff. You know, you get a nice car. Oh, yeah, see, you got that fancy new car. Yeah, see, you got the nice new glasses. Yeah, I wish I had me some glasses. Man, I got that nice jacket, man. Stop lying here. I mean, you can't enjoy your stuff because this guy, I think the young people, I think they call it hating on somebody. Instead of being thankful for what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, thank you for the eyes to be able to see the nice suit that you have. Thank you for the eyes to be able to see the nice glasses. You know? My children were running around. I was like, my wife and I were just like, how do they have that energy? And we're not particularly old, you know, but I'm just like, Daddy, come on, play with me. I played with you for an hour. I need to take some ibuprofen. Yeah, and some coffee and a Red Bull, you know, which my wife has banned from the house, so I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I mean, do it for me. But, you know, it, it's, I can't hate on them for their energy. I had my time. I have to say thank you, Allah, for giving me that energy. We had a janaza two weeks ago for be- beloved brother, Imam Kamara. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him jinnah. You know, but my time's coming. I didn't have, I got little strands of gray hair. You know, I see some of y'all who I've known for 20 years, man, we've gained weight, we're losing our hair, we're like, glasses, we're squinting. It's like, God, what is it, 1980? 1980? That was 20-something years ago. So, death is coming. But we have to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the life that we have. In Surah al muk you know, he describes himself. He throws down the gauntlet. It's as if he's screaming to us. تَبَارَكَ الَّذِي بِيَدِيهِ الْمُلْكُ Blessed in he whose hand is the dominion. وَهُوَ كُلِي شِئِنْ قَدِيرٌ He has power over all things. What does he say? Next ayat. الَّذِي هَلَكَ مَوْتَ He who created death. Allahu Akbar. The common denominator for all of us. Every single person in this room. And we don't know who's going to die. We're going to have a janazah next month. I don't have a crystal ball, but somebody's going to die. Wallahi, this is what he said. This is the common denominator. Even the stars die. This is the creation of black holes from the death of stars. The jinn will die. You know, we will die. Everyone will die. Kul nafsun mount. Every soul shall taste of death. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. May he always help us to be mindful that he is Malik. He is Aziz, the highest. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I want to close because I want to be brief. One of the sunnahs is to, to keep the khutbah brief but the prayer long. So I'd like to, to uh, keep with that. In closing, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to always help us be mindful of Him, that He is our Creator. 
We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us never forget Him in what we do. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always that we have hamd, that we have praise for Him and Him alone. Allahu Akbar. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant peace and blessings on Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his family and the companions. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the best of the life of this world and the best of the next and keep us safe from the hellfire. Rabbana atana fa dunya hasratan wa fil akhirati hasratan wa kinad banar. Hakim as Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha I give you a few seconds to keep your get your lines straight, inshallah. If I've said anything during the khutbah that is offensive to anyone, I apologize. If I've said anything that is incorrect, it is due to my own ignorance. I ask first Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive me for you all to be patient with me. If there's anything that I've said that is correct, it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. And please turn off your cell phones or put them on vibrate. If you have that mode. Okay. Have the line straight in the back. Please just raise your hand in the back uh, if the lines are straight, if you're ready. Okay. It's good? Okay. Jatakalaina. Okay. Okay. Please turn your hearts to Allah and pray this prayer as if it is your last, inshallah. الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا سيرات المستقيم سيرات الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الدالين سبح اسم ربك الأعلى الذي حلق فسوى والذي كدر فهدى والذي يخرج رمرعا فجأ لهم غتاء أحوى سلوك الأكفلة تنسى إلا ما شاء الله إنه يعلم جحر وما يخفى ونيسرك اليسرى فذكره إنما تذكر سيذكر ما يخشى ويتجنب الأشقى الذي يسر الكبرى ثم نامل ويحيا قد أفلح من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى فاتقر هي الدنيا ولا يخرج الحنى ولا أبقاه إن هذا لفيس في الأولى تهف إبراهيم وموسى الله أكبر سمي الله لي من حميرا الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا سيرات المستقيم سيرات الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الدالين
هل أتاك حديث عاشية وجه يوم أدين حاشعة عملة ناسبة تسلى النار حامية تسقى من عين عانية ليس لهم تآم إلى من دريع لا يسمل ولا يؤني من جوع وجه يوم أدين ناعمة لسائها رادية في جنة عالية لا تسقق فيها لاغية فيها عين جارية فيها سرر مرفعة وأقب مودعة ونمارق مصفوفة وذرابي مبثوثة أفلا ينذرون إلى إبل كيف خلكت وإلى السماء كيف رفعت وإلى جبال كيف نسبت وإلى العز كيف سديهت فذكره إنما أنت مذكر لست عليهم بمسيطر إلى من تولى وكفر فيؤذبه الله الأذاب الأكبر إنا إلينا إيابهم ثم إنا علينا حسابهم الله أكبر سمى الله لي من حمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله 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 I think we've got some, some announcements Allah 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 Assalamu alaikum. I'm just going to read the announcements. I'm going to start off with a letter or a public uh, press release that uh, just came out due to the killings that happened in Libya. It's been already been released to the, the media, uh, but it reads, Leader of the Nation's Mosque condemns ISIS killings in Libya. Imam Talib Sharif, leader of the Nation's Mosque, Master Muhammad, the oldest Muslim community located in the capital of America, dating back to the mid-1930s, released the following statement in response to the killings of Christians in Libya by the group referred to as ISIS. We strongly condemn and continue to be shocked and pained by the brutal murders of the so-called terrorist group ISIS and the likes. We extend our heartfelt prayers and condolences to the people of Ethiopia and the families of those unwilling martyrs. The savage killings of the 30 Ethiopian Christians and all the inexcusable heinous acts of violence underscores the grave need for leaders along with right-minded people and people of faith, especially Muslims throughout the world, to stand up on the pure principles of our faith and our shared humanity to reduce the world of the wicked. This has to stop. This statement is being issued from Rome, Italy, where I'm leading a delegation of American Muslims visiting Christian leaders among the folklore movement and the Pontificate Council for Interreligious Dialogue. Our efforts while in Rome are to, to strengthen the relationship among people of faith, engage in dialogue, visit places sacred and special to Christians, and plan for future work in the interest of peace and universal brotherhood. It's evident that ISIS is not an authority in the, religions, in the religion it claims. Their killing of Ethiopian Christians attests to their lack of basic education and scholarship of Quranic teachings, Islamic principles, and history. ISIS should know that 
It was the Christian king and his people in the Christian lands of Ethiopia who were the first outside of Mecca, Saudi Arabia, to provide protection, give asylum, and defend the followers of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, when they were weak and receiving intense persecution from the pagans of Mecca. They should also be aware, under the very first government established by Prophet Muhammad in Medina, Saudi Arabia, Christians, Jews, and others were told by him that they did not have to accept Islam, but rather continue practicing their religion exactly as they had, had been prior to his advent. The Muslims were ordered not to destroy their houses of worship nor break a cross. Muslims were ordered to protect and defend what was sacred to them. Al-Islam is not to be seen as a religion uh, separate from Christianity and Judaism. The prophets of Judaism are our prophets. The prophets of Christianity are also our prophets. God did not send prophets and messengers to disagree with each other. If you understand their messages, they all are in harmony with each other, and they all are advancing the same thing, the way of God for mankind and community life. All acts of violence, whether committed by people claiming a faith or committed against people of different faiths, are also desperate attempts for legitimacy and recruitment to their causes and are, and are outright betrayal of, faith, of the faith they claim. We call upon them to stop their inhumane ways and return to the in inherent goodness of the human soul and the common values shared by so many Muslims, Christians, and Jews, and others. In all evil, there is some good, as the Almighty God is, is, is always present. These acts of savage killings are drawing together leaders and right-minded people who have collective power to secure peace and global stability. So that was the statement that was released by Master Muhammad, the nation's mosque. And additional, I do have other announcements. Uh, we just had a Nassim conference this past weekend, and uh, we wanted to extend a special thank you um, to the visionaries, the organizers, the volunteers, and the participants of this year's Nassim conference weekend. Uh, inshallah, we will see uh, all of you next year that were able to contribute. And uh, if you're interested in helping to plan for the next year's Nassim Conference, uh, please don't hesitate to contact our brother Jamal Abdul Malik. Uh, also, in addition, there's also a security update. Um, effective immediately, Master Muhammad will no longer be allowing bags into the Juma prayer service, a uh, Masala area. Um, there will be some discretionary exemptions based on security. Uh, visitors to the masjid are asked to leave their bags at their home or in their car prior to entering. Uh, security will begin enforcing this new policy in the next coming weeks. Also, prayer times, please be advised the Salat al-Fajr and Thur will be prayed in congregation at the masjid approximately a half hour after the event. Uh, for the remainder of the month of April, uh, prayer time will be uh, 545 and Thur prayer time will be 145 for the con congregational prayer. Uh, the remainder of the daily prayers will be held in congregation 15 to 20 minutes after the event is called. Uh, Help Wanted uh, Key Bar Nutritional Program. Uh, we're seeking um, special individuals to work with our seniors in the Key Bar Nutritional Program beginning July 1st. We'll need a site manager, which is a paid position, and we also need a dedicated team of unpaid volunteers. Uh, the program operates Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. To, to 2 p.m., uh, for additional details, see Sister Tahira Sharif, who is currently over that program. Uh, community Garden, if you are interested in uh, being a part of the Community Garden and would like to work with the Masjid Community Garden, uh, please contact uh, Phyllis Kashif, Marion Hill, and Brother Albert Sabir. Uh, they are working uh, in the Community Garden, and the numbers are all in, in the announcements as well. Also, for those that have uh, paid their pledges to the Minaret Pledge Building Fund, we'd like to thank you as well. And if you have pledges that are still uh, out there, please uh, honor your pledges and make those payments either online or to the business office. In addition, we have a couple of brothers and sisters that are, are sick. We actually keep them in their prayers. Uh, Wilbert Green, Rashid Mahdi, Jamal Abdul Salam, Muhammad Ali, Amida Madhum, Diane Montgomery, Brother Alni Room, uh, Jiyun Muhammad, Norman Jackson, and Imam Kashif. Uh, we actually keep them in your prayers as well. And again, these are all in the announcements as well, if you, if you have your announcements. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum.